I want you to say this. Say, Lord Jesus Christ. Remove me from the fashions of the world. Help me, Lord. I don't want to try to please the world. I don't want to be accepted by the world. I don't want to try to copy the world. I want to copy your beauty. I reject Lucifer in his pride, in his self-love, in his fashion, and all this stuff about himself. I cast it out. The, 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 the principality of image. I reject in Jesus' name. Lord, you came selfless. Humble. Not even desirable to look upon. Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you. That I can look nice. I can look stylish. But don't, don't let it bind me, Lord. Help me balance it. That I'm beautiful on the inside. Before I'm beautiful on the outside. I don't want to judge people by appearance. Forgive me if I've ever done it. Now Lord Jesus Christ. Help me. To wear sackcloth. And ashes. In the spirit realm. Lord. That I get a spirit of mourning and repenting. Crying against the sins of the land. Crying for the lost. Lord, help me to not be so into myself. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. High-minded, boasty, proud. Despisers of those that are good. Break it off of me. Lord, get it out of my soul. I don't want to worry about that. I need to focus on you. I love you, Jesus Christ. I thank you. I reject and say right now, I rebuke insecurity. All fear. I reject it in Jesus Christ's name. I cast it down in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. That was good. Now I'm going to keep it real with you. This is what I recommend. This is what I, y'all are doing great. We're almost done. We got one segment and we're done. Then we're going to carry on tomorrow. Okay? Lord willing. The final segment is my favorite. Write this down. The most ancient form of worship. The most ancient form of worship. Write that down. We're really feasting tonight. Give thanks to Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So good. And it's, it's a good balance. It's such a good balance. You know what I mean? Listen, in most times... Just be fairly balanced. The only one you can't balance is hot or cold. Right? You got to be hot. But in life, just balance everything. That's all. So you're not too far to the right or too far to the left. Anything in life, really. In essence. But that was an important one. Because nobody talks about it. Nobody deals with it. And you're going to feel so much better about yourself. When you could walk and you are not worried about the reaction of people. Do you know it will help you to rebuke people better? When you already know you're set apart because you no longer care. But this is what I recommend. That if you get sackcloth literally, they call it burlap, right? Even if it's just once a week. Go in your prayer closet and wrap yourself in it. Cover yourself in it. I feel God right now. Wow. He's pleased with this. He's pleased with this. Wrap yourself in your prayer closet. In burlap. Sackcloth. Spend 15 bucks. You know actually Walmart sometimes has them. Yes. You know how they got the fabric part? I seen it there. 
at the Walmart down here. And you get enough, get like two yards of it. And go in shirtless or whatever so you can feel it. Wrap yourself in it and just sit there and cry out to God. I'm telling you, it's supernatural. It does something to you. Now I said privately because I'm not going to be like wrap it up and walk through downtown. <laughs> Listen, you can laugh, but some of us have to do that as a public display of repentance. But the reason I didn't go with that first is you got to start secretly first. Come on, that's good. Your cry got to be personal with God before people hear it. That's what Jesus said. They do things to be what? Seen of men. They like to be heard. They have the reward. But if you start in that closet, I recommend anybody here in this room or anyone that learns from this teaching that you could give to, if they have fashion, which there's nothing wrong with. I'm going to have a nice outfit on tomorrow in Jesus' name. But even if it's once a week, try to leave your house in something that you find like embarrassing to put on. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying like over the top, but like some sweats and a tee. Just go to Walmart. Just Why? What does that do? It's helping you what? Not care. I didn't say to change your life. I didn't say change your wardrobe. As long as it's godly, right? But once a month. What's wrong with that? Out of 30 days, every, every 29th day, just put something on that you normally wouldn't like wearing. Right? Don't match as good. Don't do certain things. Right? And leave. And you know what's going to happen the first time you do it? That, that flesh is going to be so self-conscious. You're like, she's looking at me, ain't she? You're going to be pushing the car. Just, I know, I know, girl, it's my pastor. He be bugging. Just... <laughs> You know what I mean? The dude is just, I don't know. Sometimes I just don't know about him. Matter of fact, I'm just, I'm done with this partnership stuff. He got me bugging. Just wearing some old sweatpants and clean clothes. Y'all ladies know you got them clean clothes. The cleaning clothes, the house clothes. You know, you know the house clothes. <laughs> bleach. <laughs> she said bleach on them. Leave the crib with the clean, cleaning clothes. Just bleach stain, just. <laughs> what, what? What you got? Because what's going to happen is, if it came down to it, that'll be out of you. See what I'm saying? Oh, here it is. What was Peter under? The bondage of the principality of image. Because he publicly denied Jesus Christ because he was more worried about what they think about him. So you got to choke it out of you. Choke it out of you. So it don't matter. You could be in the middle of a conference at work with the president of the company. He say something about Jesus. Yeah, uh, Phil. I serve Jesus. He's the Lord. Please stop you. I remember, I kid you not. I flew all the way to Maryland. It's like two years ago. Because I was trying to do another job, bring more money to the fam and the ministry. They flew me out, paid for my flight to do a three-day training course. And the guy had the most nasty mouth. Every other word was G, D, and G. I said, bruh, I don't care if you flew me from Alaska. You are not going to do this in this meeting. Like, who says that at another person's meeting? I was like, I don't care, bruh. That name is holy to me. But I had to develop that. Sometimes you don't know why God will have you do some things that don't make sense to you or wisdom to you. Jesus could have just healed that man's eyes. There's certain things he will tell you to do and you will wonder why are you telling me to do this? Because he's trying to get something that's in you out of you. And the only way to get it out of you is for you to stand against it. Right? You, you want to talk about humbling? What was it like growing the beard for me? Humbling. This is before Duck Dynasty. This is before the Red Sox grew the beards. It's before beards were the end thing. And it make it better that I'm five foot one. You know what I'm saying? 
I'll never forget when it got to a certain level where I couldn't braid it, I couldn't hide it, I couldn't tuck it, I couldn't gel it. Just the wind would be flapping it everywhere as I'm walking. I'm like, oh, babe, I'm cutting this, I'm cutting it, I'm cutting it, I'm done. But God wanted me to go through humility. I had to know what it was like to publicly not care what people think about me. Hallelujah. And I thank God that he used my wife to say, honey, don't. And I was probably just popping lip, but she still was used. Because I know God told me to grow it. You understand? Now, he might not tell you to grow a beard. But it just sets you apart. There are certain things you will do where it's not really for them, it's for you. You understand? Well, on your lunch break, when you bring that Bible, when you get the courage to bring your Bible in your lunchroom, it's for you. So you let it be known. There's nothing better than just let it be known immediately who you are and what you stand for with anybody in your life. Check them at the door. Be like, hey, cool, you want to get to know me, but just so you know, we really about this King Jesus Christ. We ain't going to be talking lip over the phone or worldly stuff or nothing like that. I don't play that over here. If you could, you could apply your standard right then and there at the door. If you could tell them your boundaries right then and there at the door. They take it. Hold on. You just hit a good nail. Did y'all hear that? This is what a lot of Christians do wrong. They have a shame for Christ. Although they love him. Come on, talk to me. So Jesus ain't the first thing people know you as when you get to know them and they get to know you. So then when you finally come around with Jesus, they're like, <laughs> what is this? Bro, we're about to go out and drink, dude. And what's this all about? And you're like, oh, no, I, 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 I'm a child Christian. You know, how, do you, how, do you, how do you make up for that? But I'm telling you, listen, we want you tomorrow when you go back home that you have this new way of walking and thinking and acting and living. Amen. That it don't matter where it is, they know you as that holy man. Amen. Don't you want to be known as a holy woman? Don't you want to be known as a holy man? That is so glorious. And it's not that it's not that they know you because you tell them you holy. They know. Will don't play. That man don't even you're wasting your time. Don't try to tempt him. He will not cheat on his wife. He is not going to uh, do something crooked. He is a holy man. John don't play. That's what you want them to say. Amen. Amen. That man loves his Jesus. He will tell the president to repent. Glory. And when you separate yourself, it is such a powerful moment in your walk with Christ because you did it. You finally did it. This is what they don't want you to know. This is what dying to self really is. It's dying to yourself means you no longer care if you exist to the world. Amen. It don't matter no more. It don't matter. That's why everybody we meet, my wife and I, praise the Lord. That's not a show thing. We for real. We about that. Praise the Lord. Hey, Jesus came. We cool. We go bowling. Play some badminton tomorrow. We do normal things. But Jesus Christ is always intertwined in the Amen. fabric of our existence. Amen. He exists in everything we say, do, and think. And the minute that does not happen in your life is how you sin. Because if he exists in every fabric of your life, you'll acknowledge him in everywhere and every place. Right. And you'll say, I'm not going back to those pills because Jesus is so real to me. I'm not going to treat him that way. I'm not going back to the bottle. I'm not going to go back to that fornication video. I'm not going to do it. And see the danger, the danger of self-love. You ever hear these, these false preachers? First thing you got to deal with love yourself. Love yourself. Shut up and sit down, you false prophet. That's the first thing you got to do is love yourself when my Bible says they love not their life to their death. That's why you're going to take the mark because you love yourself. But if you know, now that don't mean you cut yourself. Like, I hate myself. I, I hate myself. No, it's, 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 it's simply you don't care about you anymore. 
this was a victory. Listen, I'm tapping into something that you, the, the fact you flew here for this, you drove here for this, you sacrificed for this, Amen. and it's for Christ pouring out of me because I need you to get this so you make it to heaven. Paul tapped in to the mystery. He understood the revelation that it's I live, but it's not I, but it's Christ that lives in me. I no longer exist. It ain't my image anymore. I don't exist anymore. I'm dead. I'm, I'm, I'm literally Christ in the flesh. How do I say that? I'm not Christ. But I'm so dead. He's so much in me. It's almost like you came to see G. Amen. Let me tell you something. If we can get to this realm. If we can get to this realm. I'm telling you. You will be completely liberated. When you can finally let go. You don't have to impress nobody. Say it. I don't have to impress nobody. I don't need to be accepted. I need to be accepted by Jesus Christ. That's it. Anyone else? With him? is just icing on the cake. You need to know this. Because the Bible says the whole world lies in. In the wicked one. This means you are outnumbered when you go to the airport. You're outnumbered when you go to your hotel. You're outnumbered when you walk to your car. If you're outnumbered, settle it in your hearts. That's it. Settle it in your heart that I know the fact is this. It's no longer about me. Do you know how much sins you'll avoid this way? Because really, if you get offended, what is that a sign of? Be honest. I'm somebody. Say it again. I'm somebody. That's, That's the only reason you would get offended with anything in life. That's me. I know. I know it. Anything you get offended over. It's e now listen. The only offense is for the defense of the gospel. But when it's personal. Right? Then what is that? You still exist. Shouldn't matter. Jesus was naked, bleeding on the cross and said, Forgive them, they know not what they do. Because he was utterly selfless. He, he, but this was a process. It was a process. Hmm? So let's carry on. We're going to tap this last area and then we're going to pray. And then we're going to dismiss and carry on tomorrow. In Jesus Christ's name. We talked about that, the most ancient form of worship, right? Now, there's a few of you that I may have talked on the side with. And you try to pry it out of me, you got a little, sn little snippet. Some of y'all think y'all slick. Yeah, bless, what's up? Hey, nothing, just, uh, just calling to say hi. Oh, cool, yeah, how's life, huh? What you been studying? <laughs> what you got in your notepad, bro? <laughs> What's in that oven? Okay. Come on. Come on. Ah. That's a problem with new notepads. How do y'all feel after that message right there? You ready? You ready? You ready to be a normal believer that don't got nothing to prove to nobody? You know how much, you know how much you'll save yourself by doing that? You'll protect yourself from a lot of stuff, I'm telling you. I have a message called The Curse of the Bastard. And we don't have time for that tonight, but that's a good one. I'm a little, I'm like, Lord, was I supposed to? 
But anyway, it's the most ancient form of worship. Write that down. It's when it's heavy. Now, I can give you the long version, but I'm going to give you the short version instead. Um, this is going to be a video, right? Lord, look. Yeah. I don't know if I want to release it to the public. I'm going to be proud of giving it to you. Okay, y'all ready? The most ancient form of worship. This is one of the greatest revelations that God has ever given us. I didn't say given me, I said given us. Lord. See, too many men that have a gift of the word, they blow up out. You know what I mean? Like, relax, bro. You just adore. You know what I'm saying? That's like the cell phone boasting about a person talking through it. <laughs> Without a voice, you're nothing. You're a useless phone. But when the Holy Ghost speaks through you, Always give him the glory. Amen. Uh, you hear her, you heard her, amen. amen. I'm like, you know, Joe, quick. She's like, honey, did you say glory to God after that message? I'm like, I think I did. She's like, that's a love right there. Amen. Love right there. Because she knows I love the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because she always, she doesn't want that law of erosion. Right. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Because I used to tell my wife, honey, I don't need to say anything. I know I give him the glory. People should know. She said, Did you speak it in? What's the harm in it? Make it a habit. Glory to God. Amen. 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 So when I tell you this message is ridiculous, I personally would fly into a radio to get this message. I kid you not. Tomorrow, though, Lord willing, I want to have some fun. I got a message called The Mysteries of Paul. Oh, that's a good one. And we got to deal with the curse in the basket because we got to be like, oh, okay. Oh, so, listen to this. When you worship the Lord, what do you do? Okay, submission. Speak to him. So, yes. When you worship the Lord, Mm, interesting. Yeah, no, it's worship's like a spiritual kiss, you know. Mm, I like that. Now let me ask you a question, Saints. Let's have a little fun with this. We got praying, praising, worshiping. No, 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 just stick to these. What's the difference though with praying and praising? Huh? Praising is like when you're you're shouting. Praising doesn't just mean like you're singing. Praising can just mean you're jumping around shouting. Singing, right? So praising is that. What is praying? Communication. Communication. What is supplication? No. Is it supplication or request? You're asking for something. Supplication. Right? So you got supplication, you got prayer, you got worship, you got praise. And then once you get to a mature level in the Lord, you have the eternal conversation. 